Alright guys, so we're on to the next uh, review here of Dragon Ball Super. This is episode 67, and this episode is called With New Hope in Our Hearts, Farewell Trunks. Alright, so I just gotta start this by saying, I don't know what the fuck happened. I'm not gonna go on like a crazy rant or anything, but like, what the fuck happened? Two weeks ago, you know... After the episode where Goku Black and Zamasu fused and he was beating everyone's ass, it's like, wow, like, you know, from the second Goku Black showed up, this arc of Dragon Ball Super has been incredible. This is like, it's just building and building, getting better and better. Goku Black is so threatening. He's a great villain. Oh, shit. You know, the supreme power of Goku Black and then the immortal Zamasu fused. And then, like, these last two episodes, like, what the fuck are they doing? Like, they just don't give a shit at all. They <laughs> They don't care. They just sped in these two episodes. So much happened. So much. Conf no one under this episode 67. No one understands this episode. If you tell me you understand this episode, you had better follow it up with a video breakdown of everything that goes on because we explain shit that doesn't make sense. Tons of shit is just off the wall baddie. I mean, think about where we were. Fuse Zamasu was beating everyone's ass. Then from that point, nothing made sense. All the retcons with Vegito, the spirit bomb sword. Then in this episode, Zamasu becomes the universe, and then the Omni King just blows it the fuck away. He completely disintegrates the timeline. Like, what? How did we? First off, this was rushed. This. Why is Toei? rushing through this arc to get to filler shit like you know some episode titles dropped and it's up three or four episodes of filler why rush the vegeto fight the trunks taking down you know the physical form of zamasu the zamasu cloud covering the world just rush through it doesn't fucking make sense it doesn't compute like i don't understand none of this shit makes sense isn't this a show marketed towards children you're going to tell me some 10-year-old Japanese boy is watching this shit, and he's like, oh, yeah, that made a ton of sense going back in timelines. Bullshit! Get out of here! Come on! They didn't give a fuck! How? This... <laughs> I can't believe it, man! They expect us to get hyped? They don't care! I don't, I don't want to do, like, some sort of, like, angry thing, but, like, they really just said, fuck it. The last two episodes, just finish this shit in two episodes. I don't care. This is like, this feels like when one of these long-running mangas, like one of these manga artists is told, you know what, your shit's not good anymore. You need to finish it in like five chapters. Like that just happened with Bleach, right? What the hell? I don't understand why this just happened in Dragon Ball Super. The show's not about to end. It's doing gangbusters and ratings, money, all of this. So more money comes in, so they say, fuck it, let's just ruin it. Like, I am so baffled by their decisions. Do these, does, does Toei not care about making money? Is that what you want to tell me? Do they not care about making a successful brand? These last two episodes, they just shat on the entire arc. We were all so in love with the Goku Black villain and everything that's going on. And it's like, go back and watch. Those first couple episodes with Goku Black. And in the back of your head, you think, oh yeah, remember how he wins? And then the Omni King just comes in and completely disintegrates the entire universe? Like, that doesn't make... It's like, what? Huh? What? Alright, guys, I'm actually just gonna kind of speed through the review here and then just kind of hit the key plot points. I'm actually genuinely annoyed. I Last week, you know, the retcons and stuff... You know, there was still cool action, and I wasn't really... I wasn't angry, but, like, I'm actually kind of upset. Like, man, to, to invest in a show so much, or, like, this these fictional characters, and to have, like, the creators just not giving a fuck to this extent? Like, no one can defend... You can't defend these last two episodes. Like, had they followed up last week's episode with, like, a really good episode... You know, episode 67 had made a ton of sense... They tied up a lot of loose ends. They explained the trunk spirit bomb sword in a good way. Like, I feel like we all could, we could have forgiven the everything that happened in episode 66 and we could have moved on. But now it's like, what? how can I, I can't trust these motherfuckers moving forward. I am right now 
my approval rating of Dragon Ball Super is at an all-time low. I am going to continue watching it every week when, as soon as it comes out, I'm not, I, I don't like people who go, oh, I'm done with the show, I'm done watching, and then they watch the next week. Like, don't lie, don't lie to yourself, don't lie to other people. I'm still going to watch it, but I'm very annoyed, and I'm very guarded, and I'm not going to have the same enthusiasm for it that I did before if it's just, this is just shit to them. That's all the show is. It doesn't, it's irrelevant. These, is Konami, are they running Toei Animation? Can someone fact check that for me? The boss of Konami, he, he's, he's running Toei Animation now, right? That's what's going on here? I think so. Hey, guys, remember Solid Snake? Fuck him, he's done. Hey, guys, remember Goku? Fuck him, he's done. Fuck Dragon Ball. Like, damn. 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 Alright, so the episode opens up, you know, we see everyone sort of standing there. Trunks finishes splitting Zamasu up, he disintegrates. Before he disintegrates, he kind of laughs maniacally, like, oh, I can't believe a god was beat by a human, yada yada yada. Goku walks up and specifically says, oh, Trunks, what you did, that was kind of like a spirit bomb there. And everyone shows up, it's all happiness, and Trunks is like, yeah, we did it. And then, this part was, like, really terrifying, as Zamasu, like... His being just becomes the sky and spreads out. And, like, his faces are all over the green sky. And it's really, really creepy. And it's like, at this point, I was actually excited. Like, oh, okay, cool. This is cool. And Goku and Vegeta, they try going Super Saiyan Blue to try and, you know, take this Zamasu cloud down that's covering the entire planet. And both Goku and Vegeta, they go Super Saiyan Blue and then revert back to base. And uh, Kaioshin specifically says that... Vegito using the final Kamehameha completely drained all of their power. So, at least there is a little more explanation why Vegito defused, I guess? See, but this does lead to more bullshit. So, basically, what we're led to believe here is that Vegito poured every ounce of his power in that final Kamehameha. And then, if you guys remember, Zamasu just flies up. That this shit did nothing to him. So, you're telling me every ounce of Vegito's will and power went into that to the point where Goku and Vegeta can't even transform now, and it did nothing to him. Like, that's dumb. That's dumb, considering Super Saiyan Blue Goku's Kamehameha actually hurt Zamasu. It's dumb. It's just dumb. It's, they're, not, they're not trying. They don't care. I don't know if they, they think the whole world is dumb. Like, we just, we're just fucking idiots and we're just gonna buy this shit? Like, come on. Come on. Stop it. Well, anyway. So, Trunks, he's able to go Super Saiyan. He fires a Gallic gun. Vegeta fires a Final Flash in base form. And Goku in base form fires a, fires a Kamehameha. It all, like, becomes, like, one singular attack. Like, a cool rainbow thing. It hits the sky and it does absolutely nothing. Because, you know, I, I do understand Zamasu wished for immortality from the Super Dragon Balls. So, you know, this his spirit is still immortal and it's covering the sky. And Goasu says he's trying to become the universe. He cast off his form as a god and is trying to become justice and order itself. It's like, okay, this is a concept that is cool. I, I like this. Then... All the various faces all over, they begin shooting this red energy beam down at the planet. And from the looks of it, it looks like Goku, Vegeta, and Trunks are able to block some of the attack. And it looks like they're able to save the Time Machine, Bulma, Mai, the two Kaioshins, Goasu, and normal and Kaioshin, uh, Goku, Vegeta, Trunks. They all survive. Everyone who's standing around the Time Machine, they live. But Android 8, uh, Turtle, we see everything else on the planet is all disintegrated. And we even see, back at Capsule Corporation, we see the, we see the Pilaf gang, Chi-Chi, uh, Young Trunks, and uh, Zamasu's face kind of appears in like a portal, very similar to when Goku Black first arrived. And uh, you see, back on Beerus' planet, we senses this, and Beerus can tell that it's Zamasu, and somehow he's having an effect on the present world. So it's like, oh wow, shit is crazy. Then Trunks... He tries to sense key, you know, after the dust clears from the attack, and everyone was wiped out. All those kids, Yajirobe, all this shit we've gone through with all these people, they're all dead. And it's like, what? Like, okay. So, basically, all those scenes with those characters meant nothing? Okay. Then Mai fires off her shotgun, all of her bullets at the sky, it does nothing, because obviously Zamasu... Zamasu is, like, life itself right now. Shit is crazy. So, Goku, you know, reaches into his pocket looking for Senzu, and he pulls out 
the, you know, Zeno button, the Zeno button. And he asks Kyle Shin, like, hey, Zeno would be alive in this world, right? And Kyle Shin is like, uh, fuck yeah, Zeno can never be defeated. There's no conceivable way. And Goku's like, okie dokie. And he presses a button and Zeno shows up. All right, so Zeno shows up. And I, I kind of was like, I kind of perked up a little bit. I was like, okay, here we go. So now we're going to get some interesting things. And what's cool about this, I'm glad they did this. I was hoping that they wouldn't say that Zeno would transcend the timelines. That'd be kind of dumb because time is not really, whatever. It's, this is a different Zeno. He doesn't know who Goku is. So that makes a ton of sense. And Zeno looks around and he's like, yo, what the fuck is going on here? Did you do this? And Goku's like, no, 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 no. And he points upward and at the Zamasu faces and Zeno is like, oh shit, okay, well I can't allow this to happen. And it looks like he's going to start erasing him. And Goku says, like, are you going to erase him? And Zeno's like, yeah, a world like this can't exist or some shit like that. So Goku tells everyone to quickly jump in the time machine. Bulma, Trunks, and Mai get in the time machine. Goasu and Kaioshin warp out of there with the time ring. And it's really fucking weird. Goku and Vegeta, they just hop on, like, two of the legs of the time machine. And the time machine, like, zaps out of there. But remember, we've seen it before to where... You know, the time machine goes through that weird, weird, like, area. Like, that's gotta suck for Goku, especially because he gets sick going through that, like, kind of, the path or whatever. So then, Zeno, what he does, he completely erases the timeline. He destroys the entire, everything, all the universes and chunks, it's completely erased. So everything we've been watching for these past 20 episodes doesn't matter. Zamasu got what he wanted. He wiped out all the mortals of that timeline. Hello? So we watch this whole arc just to see Zamasu win? Like, it's cool seeing, a, like, a villain who, like, wins, but I, I just can't, like, what? There was no point to this whole arc. All those characters we were introduced to all died. Only Trunks and Mai survive from that timeline that is crazy so they arrive in the present uh beerus and Whis shows up every you know everything's all cool and whatnot so goku and trunks they take the time machine and they go back and it looks kind of it's like a weird looking place like it's just empty and there's like crystals everywhere and xeno is just still there so goku goes over to him and he's like hey i'll take you to a great place and xeno's like oh really and so then they go back to the present, and Kaioshin takes Goku, Zeno, and Whis to where uh, Zeno's palace in the present. You know, the Zeno that Goku got the button from and stuff. And he introduces future Zeno to present Zeno, and that's going to become the friend that Goku promised to bring him. So, I mean, this is an interesting idea, because obviously Zeno... I mean, has nothing to do in Trunks' timeline considering that place just doesn't exist anymore. I mean, I it's unclear if he can create new stuff or whatever, but, like, Zamasu became the universe itself and then Zeno erased it. Like, just think about that for a second. Nothing we've... Nothing we've watched has mattered. All right. So then... The Grand Priest or Great Priest... Man, I'm, I'm kind of annoyed. This is so... So disappointing. What a damn, damn. So many people were defending last week's episode. Do you feel dumb now? Come on. Jeez, this is bad, man. And then Weiss reveals, you know, the great piece, the great priest is kind of like, he wants to visit Universe 7. He says Universe 7 is a cool place and all that. Goku's a great guy. I do still love Goku. And... It's revealed that the Great Priest is actually Whis's father. Now, then they go back to Capsule Corporation. They're having a little party. And then, again, we just go off the rails even harder. You know what? Let's just fuck... Just fuck me up, fam. Let's just go even crazier. Whis then concocts... And I Here's Whis's idea. Whis tells Trunks and Mai to go into the future before... The Kaioshin was killed. And then Whis is going to go into that future. And he's going to have that future Beerus take out Zamasu. And Goku even says, but what if he's immortal? 
And we says, well, we have something way better than that ceiling technique you were going to use. And Vegeta's like, well, then why didn't you? And Beerus cuts him off and says, you need to stop relying on the gods. You got to do it yourself. That makes sense. I don't have a problem with that. That does make sense. But so Whis is going to go take down Zamasu. I mean, it's not even in the anime version. We're not even entirely sure where the Kaioshin was killed. In the manga, he's killed during the battle against Babidi and Dabra. But we don't know if the Kaioshin was killed by Goku Black or exactly what happened. Also, in the process of this, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Do not try and make sense of this because the writers did not give a fuck in any... They did not give a fuck. They... Whis goes... Because Beerus doesn't want Whis doing all this. And Whis says, did you forget that you created a new green time ring, Beerus, when you destroyed Zamasu in the present? And it's like, wait, why would that create a time ring if that was the Zamasu of that timeline? Like, Beerus didn't go in the future, he didn't go in the past to destroy that Zamasu. That Zamasu also had not yet gone to the future or gone to the past, so why would his death affect other timelines if that Beerus and that Zamasu haven't gone anywhere yet? That doesn't make sense. It, <laughs> that doesn't make sense at all. Like, no one understood it's the writers, you motherfuckers, how dare you? How dare you shit on me like this? I am no fool, and I don't appreciate this show talking to me like I'm a damn fool. Fuck you, Toei. Fuck you. Fuck you. Wait, 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 wait. Hey, Toei. Fuck you. Then the last thing, before we, you know, says like, alright, we're gonna, you know, do the plan, whatever. He does say that, okay, so here we go, more bullshit. Trunks and Mai, they're going to be going to that, you know, that part of the timeline before the Kaioshin died, but there's also already going to be a Trunks and a Mai in that timeline. So there's going to be two Trunkses and two Mai's in that timeline. Awesome. And Trunks and Mai, they're like, well, sure, let's go do it, because those are all the people we are fighting to protect. And it's like, well, no, they're not, because all the people you are fighting to protect are fucking dead. Zamasu won. Then we see Goasu, and he puts a new green time ring in the little box of the time rings and says, like, this is my sin, this is my fault. And he does seem really heartbroken, and I, I do got a feel for my man Goasu. He was a little ignorant of what was going on with Zamasu, but, I mean, this dude is good. Like, I like Goasu's personality. He, he's kind of like a more serious version of old Kai, kind of. Well, I don't know, that's not really a great comparison, but I do like Goasu. And obviously, he is torn to fucking shreds by what happened with his apprentice. You know, Beerus even says, uh, when they arrive back in the present timeline, you need to pick your apprentices better. Like, it, it's, you know, Goasu's my boy. I, I will elevate Goasu to the status of being my boy. I feel bad for him, because this wasn't his fault directly. He didn't culture Zamasu into being like this. Zamasu was just a crazy fuck. So Trunks gets ready to leave. Goku says, you know, you're going to be strong enough to take down any enemy that shows up. Uh, they never named Trunks' form. We're not even sure Trunks' power relative to Goku and Vegeta's. Whatever. Bulma has a funny line where she's like, oh, looks like future me is going to get to have grandchildren first. Ha 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 ha. Hilarious. Up to this point, fuck this episode. Fuck everything about it in the fucking ass. And fuck you, Toei. But... I'm not a negative Nancy. I'm only going to shit on something if it deserves it. The last two minutes of this episode were great. There's no denying that. As Trunks and Mai, they say goodbye to everyone. They walk over to the time machine and Vegeta's standing there. And Vegeta charges at Trunks and punches. And Trunks catches it. And then the camera cuts to Trunks and you see he's smiling. And then it cuts to Vegeta and he's also smiling. And I'm like, God damn, that was good. That was pretty good right there. And you even see a shot of Goku and Bulma smiling too. Like, I do like... Ve see, the best thing this arc has done, in my opinion, besides Goku Black himself, and Zamasu for the most part also was a great villain, but the relationship building with Vegeta and Trunks... Vegeta... I would say so far in Dragon Ball Super, Vegeta has been the best character. They really have fleshed out his character arc a lot. See, that's why I'm not giving up on Dragon Ball Super. I'm not... No longer am I going to expect high things from it. Like, I, you know, when Super Saiyan Rose showed up, I was like, oh, shit. 
this show, how great is this show going to become? Now, I'm kind of like, uh, you know what? This is going to be an unpopular opinion, but Dragon Ball GT is better than this shit, okay? They, the ending to an arc is very important. The Cell and Android saga was very, you know, don't get me wrong, very, very solid. But Gohan going Super Saiyan 2, the father-son command made to finish Cell off, elevated that arc, in my opinion, to god-level status. The ending of this arc is such shit that it brings it crap plummeting down to earth. This was the truth. Guys, before Vegito showed up, I was in the process of making a video I was going to put out when this arc was done. My top five Dragon Ball sagas. This includes Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT, and Dragon Ball Super. I'm not going to reveal any other positions of any other sagas because I'll probably still do the video. But before Vegito showed up, I was... Thinking of, I was tentatively had this slotted in as my second favorite saga. I was going to do a top five sagas. This was going to be number two. Now? Boy, fuck you. This, this is not, this is the worst saga. I'm taking Garlic Jr. over this shit. Well, I don't, I mean, I don't know if that's true, but damn, man. They really fucked this up. They really fucked this up. Damn you, damn you, Toei. Damn you. I kind of I kind of went off the rails for a second there. The the scene with Vegeta was great. Trunks and Mai are going up in the time machine up into the sky. And this was really cool and actually kind of interesting. You see Gohan and Piccolo show up and Gohan looks like he's kind of sweating as though he's been training and also he appears to be in his, in his ultimate Gohan transformation. He's not just normal base form. You could see it. He's in his ultimate Gohan transformation. And Trunks starts to cry, and he thinks of future Gohan, and like he he realizes that he failed, he couldn't protect that world because remember that future world where future Gohan is from, it's completely disintegrated. Everyone in that timeline died. So the original timeline, like Trunks is from, well, okay, but that wasn't the original timeline because it, I don't know, it it completely got destroyed. Everything was dead. Everything is gone. But this is a touching scene as Trunks thinks of future Gohan. He sees Gohan in front of him waving goodbye, telling him to be well. And, you know, Trunks and Mai, they leave in the time machine and head off, I guess, you know, before the Kaioshin died in his timeline. Really cool that we get to see Ultimate Gohan right here. Maybe they'll try and bring him back to relevance. I wouldn't count on it, Gohan. Gohan fans, don't you dare expect anything. Because I don't foresee them. They're gonna keep. They're gonna keep cock teasing you guys. You know. Oh look, Ultimate Gohan. But you know, guess what? That next tournament's gonna roll around, and Gohan is gonna be doing some bullshit. Some bullshit's gonna be happening. Gohan's not gonna be getting involved. Not gonna happen. All in all, I'd say this was the worst episode of Dragon Ball Super. Uh, the last two minutes were one of the best moments of Dragon Ball Super. The farewell with Vegeta and the farewell with Gohan. Uh, and Trunks remembering future Gohan. All the rest, bullshit. Bullshit, 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 bullshit. Anyone who criticizes this episode, you're telling the truth. If you think this episode was good, I feel like you're just lying to yourself. You love Dragon Ball as a brand so much that you're going to lie to yourself to accept this. I can't hate on you if you're doing that. I love Dragon Ball so much. This pains me. My heart is heavy with pain. Good thing they rushed through that Vegito fight, guys. It's a good thing Vegito is only on screen for five minutes. Because guess what, fuckers? We have another arc of filler coming up. Oh, boy! Did you want Vegito? Too fucking bad. You're getting filler, baby. That's what you're gonna get, and you're gonna fucking like it. What? What? You wanna see Goku Black fight Vegito? Fuck you. You are gonna get filler, and you're gonna fucking like it. You're gonna watch every week as we shove filler shit down your fucking throat. Alright, so, yeah, the preview for this episode. Goku is looking for the Dragon Balls to bring uh, King Kai, Kaiosama back to life. Which is cool, I do like that. That is a neat idea for a filler episode. I, I just, by next week, I'll have uh, calmed down and I'll just put this arc in the rear view mirror. Man, what a disappointment. Uh, so, next week, filler. Goku looking for the Dragon Balls. Hey, I, I know this for sure. 100%. I will think next week uh, next week's episode is better than this one. I guess if sorry this turned into a rant, but I was spitting some real shit today. I don't give a fuck.